Well, hello everyone. Good morning. And happy Mother's Day to all our mothers out there. We do have a few announcements this morning. Birth, we have some birthdays coming up. We've got Mary Bodden, Bodderman. Her birthday is actually today. And then tomorrow is John Kennedy. Kennand, his birthday is tomorrow. So happy birthday to the two of you. And so we've got uh, Julie coming forward to make a few announcements as well. Well, good morning, everyone. And again, happy Mother's Day. So I hope somebody is going to pamper you today. <laughs> I hope all our mothers will get pampered. So our first announcement, we have a cookie tray over there at the table. And after church, you can just grab some cookies, enjoy a little time of fellowship and treats after church this morning. And Kenda, she's going to be getting together on Saturday every month. We're going to have kind of, maybe we'll start that in June. We're going to try to find a time where women can get together and go out for breakfast or some time of fellowship. So anyway, we'll make sure that you have the information. Contact us if you're interested to get together. Just like the men's go out for breakfast, they call that the men's breakfast club. Now the women are going to try to do that. That's what we're trying to get together our women to do for fellowship and a time of enjoyment. And also about uh, the women's retreat, if you haven't signed up. Actually, I can't believe how quickly the time is going. But so I hope you're going to have a, hope you're going to think about coming. We're going to have a great time of fellowship. So far, I think we've got about 25 women. So it would be nice to meet somebody new, some people we don't know, or we could have a nice time to meet new friends and make new relationships. And then, Shannon, you want to come in up front here with me? Hello. Well, talk about game night. Yes. We had uh, Friday, May 19th at 6.30. And what are we going to do? We're going to have games, so you can bring games if you want a, your, a specific game. <coughs> we'll play cards, whatever you want to do. It's be a fun time of get to getting together and playing games. Is there other things that we're going to be doing? Well, yeah. They'll, there'll be pickleball in the gym as well. So you can play games here in the church room. Otherwise, you can go out in the gym room and play pickleball. And it costs $5 to do pickleball, $5 a person, if you want to be a part of that. So again, that's game night on May the 19th, starting at 6.30. And Jeff also has something he'd like to say this morning. Pastor Jeff. Well, hello, everyone. You know the DJ Breakfast Club? We kind of get together. We have a great time in the morning just talking about various things and different topics, different verses of the Bible. So next month, Don Martin will host it. And we plan to go... Crackleberry, Crackleberry, or Crackle Barrel, excuse me. And that's going to be on the third weekend of June. So he's willing to host and get it organized. So we're thinking it's going to be the, uh, the third of the weekend in June. And we're planning to do it in July and in August as well. So every every month, or possibly if it doesn't work out, every three months. And RJ says, 
he probably would like to in six months he would like to also host it so and now someone else is saying bill is saying he would like to host it in other words they're kind of like leading the bible study and making all the plans and contacting the men so okay well we'll assign different people <laughs> that's good that we're it's not always up to me the topics to that we want to discuss you guys can can think about what topics so thank you very much And now it's time for worshiping our Lord. song wow how great thou art and now it's time for prayer requests
it's time for love off our love offering. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much for our mothers out there. God bless them all. We pray for these prayer requests that have been placed in this box. You know what they are. You know the people that put them in there. You know their needs. And now we ask that you would lead Pastor Jeff in his message today, that your word would touch our hearts and our minds. May your love guide and protect us. And we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. And now another worship song. We just want to let you know this song is a little bit different. It's like Jesus is in front of us, Jesus is alongside of us. And we're going to explain what that means and looks like. When he's in front of us, you will notice that we're signing very clearly. When our hands are down, It means it's not a very clear message. So hopefully you'll get a get this <laughs> and
this is the interpreter speaking. I apologize. I misunderstood the message at the beginning of this song. And what she was saying is that the person sitting back would be a little bit more blurry that was given more of an explanation on the various characteristics that were brought out of God by the signer in the front. Sorry about that. Well, good morning, everyone. I'm really happy to re be back here today. Last week, I was at the men's retreat, and I do feel much refreshed. It was nice to get away and just have not the responsibility of daily stuff. So the title of the message there was Behold Him. And it was a reminder as we get busy in life to make sure that we keep our eyes on our Lord and we keep focused on him. So I hope you all had a, have some very good heartfelt feelings about your mother, a lot of gratitude and love and appreciation, and online as well, those that are watching online. I'm very grateful for my mother. Yeah, my mother is, uh, my mother, someone is saying, yeah, we want to bless our mothers today for Mother's Day. So are you all ready for his word this morning? I have three pictures, not four, five, or six. No, just three is enough. So we'll give you our three pictures. We don't want you falling asleep out there. Here's my first picture. Mother's Day, flowers, all-star flowers, very beautiful smelling flowers. Flowers are a gift that we give. They're blooming. It shows our love is blooming. Mother's heart is growing like a flower. God created these flowers in his creation. A variety of very aromi aromic flowers. Someone is saying, God is saying happy birthday to Jesus. <coughs> we give flowers because we love someone. These are great, great, great comments. So yeah, a variety of flowers. Do you give flowers today or give your wife flowers? Give mother flowers? Or you do grow flowers at home. A lot of people are saying, yeah. Here's our second picture. And of course, mothers are very busy, yep, taking care of children and multitasking. <coughs> Mother of the Year, this picture, Mother of the Year. She should receive an award for that. That's right. We need to have someone like that. <coughs> so how many things is she doing here? We, uh, we call that multitasking. Yeah, multitasking. She's doing several things here. 24-7. She works 24-7. She's never off, right? She should get plenty of pay, right? Yeah, mothers are very, very busy. Have They have big hearts taking care of their children. And some of you probably feel like this picture here, correct? One mother is saying, yep, I do. Hats off to you, mothers. Now here's my third picture. And of course, whose mother is this? This is Mary. And who's Mary? 
She's the mother of Jesus. That's right. And God blessed. God blessed Mary to be the mother of Jesus, to trust him, trust her to care for him. And mothers out there always love their children. The mother of all love, someone else is saying here. Anyone online have a comment? They're all saying the same thing as what's being said here. Obviously, today is Mother's Day. Yeah. And of course, my message is about the mothers of Jesus. And of course, that was Mary. And this is in the book of Luke, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. But let me back up a little bit before we read the verses and, I be and begin my message. On that first picture, the flowers that you saw, do you know that statistics show that flower giving is the most popular during Mother's Day? And the survey that was taken, they say about 47% of people give flowers for Mother's Day. And second, most popular gift, can you guess it? Going out to eat, going out to chocolates, chocolate, which books, oh, okay. Well, the next is 36% give chocolates for Mother's Day. You know Hershey's? Yeah, her, she, yeah, that's the name of it. Anyway, I'm trying to make a joke here, but I'm not sure you got it. And then the third most popular gift is what? Gift cards. And that's 29%. And most of you, like you said, go out to eat. And that's about 26% go out to eat. And another small percent is like jewelry or, you know, beautiful beauty products or such beauty products or anything. That's But the most popular is flowers for Mother's Day. So I'm going to ask the mothers in our congregation today. And we have a few here. What did your kids give you this morning or today for Mother's Day? Or what do you want? I should say, what do you want your children to give? I want to be celebrated today, be with my kids. I want to be honored, one would say earlier. I want to make people make I want them to make time for me. Anything else? From our mothers out there? No? Well, there's others just, just I'm sorry I'm throwing all these numbers out to you, but for Mother's Day, they were asking mothers what did they really want on Mother's Day? What do they really want the most? And most of them responded they wanted to sleep in. That was 30% of the women wanted to have a chance to sleep in. And you saw the picture of the mother with so much she was trying to do multitasking there. She sure, like one said, 24-7 they're on. They're never off. Another one said, alone time. That was also 30%. Online, someone saying, all I want for my kids is love. I want them to love me. Yeah, that's exactly what God wants us to do, too. And 11% say they just want to a spa, like a massage. That was 11%. 
and 7%, they just want a vacation, time off, just to get away from the kids for a while, <coughs> sort of a break. And 2%, they want somebody else to clean their house. Yeah, someone they were saying, yes, please, maybe you ask your boys to clean your house. <laughs> you be careful, RJ, she's <laughs> going to get put you to work there. <laughs> and last, 2%, they want recognition and appreciation. That's all. They want to recon be recognized and appreciated. That's another 2%. Hey, Mom, happy Mother's Day. I just want you to know I love you. I'm crying out to my own mother. Or speaking out to my own mother. Now we're going to look at our verse for today. And it's about four slides. And of course, we all know the story about Mary and how she became pregnant with the ho by the Holy Spirit and her cousin Elizabeth, they both were pregnant. And of course, Elizabeth was, was older. And Elizabeth had John the Baptist, that's right. And John the Baptist actually baptized Jesus. Wow, what a story. Here he was born, and later he's baptizing the Lord and Savior. So what, did, what's, what do you wonder about Mary when you read this? Um, about the confusion about how she was going to get pregnant. She wasn't sure how that was going to happen. Yeah, and Joseph, too. I mean, of course, you thought she had an affair. You're thinking of the natural approach to getting pregnant. But just imagine, she had the Son of God, Jesus, within her. And we all know that famous statement, with God, all things are possible. He knows what he's doing. Now I've got parts highlighted in yellow, and that's verse 38. And it says, Mary said, I am the Lord's servant. Let this thing you have said happen to me. And Mary was showing exactly what her attitude was. And this is a different version explaining this. Hold on here. We're trying to make sure this gets downloaded right.
And of course, this is a different version. And it gives a better, maybe clearer meaning. In the verse 38 says, Then Mary said, Behold, the maid servant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And then the angel departed from her. See the what I've emphasized in white? Let it be. Let it be. Means go ahead. I'm willing to do what you want me to do. Okay. Let it happen. It's like I'm not going to avoid this. I'm not going to not do this. So it means she was saying, I'm willing to do what you want to do. Okay. I'm your humble servant. I'll s accept the responsibility. She didn't even think twice about it. She just said, let it be. Wow. So she was submitted. She submitted herself to the will of God. And she trusted her Lord and the message that the angel brought. So she allowed Jesus to be, to grow in her, to be placed in her, and to be born of her. Let it be. That's powerful. And because of that, we can be free of our sin, because that's why Jesus was born, to remove our sin. And it all started with Mary being willing to obey God to be the mother of Christ. She accepted the responsibility, and we too accept the responsibility as his children. Where have you heard that, let it be, before? Or how many have heard that? Many of you heard that, let it be. From the moment that Mary accepted, meaning let it be, She already walked in the blessed way. Meaning that it was a lonely road. Because, of course, people looked at her expecting that she had an affair and a legitimate child. So perhaps it was a very lonely light, so life. So blessed be Mary for being willing to gossiped about and being talked about like that. So she didn't know what was going to happen. She didn't know what it was going to look like in the future, but she was willing to accept it because she trusted her Lord and God. Mary was willing to allow God to direct her life. She wanted to be his servant. She wanted to do his will. She realized her life wasn't her own. She surrendered it to God. And for him, she wanted to serve him, to be a witness, to be his minister, to help people, to serve people. That was Mary. So when the angel Gabriel left, Mary went to see her cousin Elizabeth. And, of course, Elizabeth was pregnant as well. Sometimes when we realize that our, uh, our birth of our child will be close to another, like a friend or a relative, we realize, oh, they could be friends when they are born and maybe play together. And sometimes if an older mother has a child, she can give some really wise ad advice. And so she was there encouraging Mary and supporting her. And when Mary was done visiting with Elizabeth, she went back home. And of course, there she probably faced some cruelty of the people, like her neighbors, those in the town. I'm sure they were very cruel to her, probably insulted her, gossiped about her, backbited her. Saying, well, you just got married, now you're already nine months pregnant, really? I, of course, suspecting the worst. 
I'm sure her family as well. Maybe they ostracized her. But now we celebrate Mary. She was a very good example of a surrendered life in submitting to God's will, not her plan, not her want, not her will. Suppose that were us in her shoes. Would we submit? Maybe not fully. Maybe we'd have our reservations. But I mean fully surrendered. She was fully submitted to God's will and plan. Whatever it meant that she had to go through. And yes, it was a challenge. In that time, Right now, we've got other challenges. We're busy with technology and lives are busy. Would we be willing to submit like Mary did? That was quite a submission and quite a cost for Mary. And back on Mary's time, of course, stuff like that was not acceptable. They wouldn't believe what she said about being f pregnant by the Holy Ghost. You know that Italian sign? Mamma Mia. Looking down on her, really. You going to believe that story? But thank God that Mary was willing to take that criticism, that rejection, the ostracism. God sub she submitted to God, and God trusted her to be the mother of his son. Can you imagine? God made it happen. It was seemed impossible, but God made it happen. And because of Jesus, we, with his death and resurrection on the cross, we too will resurrect someday. But the point is we need to surrender our lives to Jesus. Let him be our at the control. So we choose to follow God, sometimes it does mean that we'll be isolated. Sometimes do you feel that? You're ostracized by others? Kind of lonely life? But Mary wasn't alone in this. God was with her. God's son was in her. Wow. So she truly is blessed. And each day, Mary had to submit to God. Her body became more and more like a room for the Lord. Think about that on Mother's Day today. She allowed the Lord to live in her, to grow in her. That is true submission. And her journey in life in this time was pretty difficult. Imagine yourself in her shoes. I'm sure she was persecuted. I'm sure she felt alone. Just like, uh, just like Elizabeth too, she well in that time, and it was very not right to have a, to have a baby before you were married. In our time now, it's different, of course, but. We accept single mothers. But back then, it was a horrific sin. You were looked down upon. But now, of course, things have changed. A lot of single mothers. And I'm not going to go into the abortion issue and all that kind of stuff right now, but 
that's another thing, another issue. But I'm talking about real mothers. Real mothers that love and cherish their children, take care of their children, teach their children. Even though they drive you crazy, you're there for them. I imagine some of you mothers here are saying your kids drive you crazy, right? But you love them. And so mothers, you've earned your, res your deep respect. And like I was talking about the difference of statistics, Mary didn't get any recognition, yet she was willing to carry Jesus all the way to his birth. She was willing to submit. She was willing to be isolated and ostracized. And because of that, she's offered new life, or we have new life and hope for this world because her son was the savior of us all. So in the same respect, we need to surrender our lives before God. We are his servants as well. We need to keep our hearts pure and honor him and obey him just like we obeyed our mothers. And remember, mothers took care of you as children. They gave you clothes. They fed you. They took care of you. All the things that they did for you. And what else am I missing here? They drive them to like a taxi. Went to your games and cheered you on. Kind of helped your self-esteem to have mom there felt good proud there's another verse I want to show you and this is from the book of Job chapter 31 verse 15 it says the one who made me in my mother's womb also made them God shaped us all inside our mothers. God knows you individually. He knows you all. He's given you different mothers throughout the generations, but God made you in your mother's womb. Imagine that. God is your creator. And it started, of course, with Eve, the first mother of all. How many here are your grandmas? We got grandmas out there? Yep, several of them. Now, how do you feel when you see your daughter having a child? How did that feel? One woman says, oh, felt real inspiring. I felt such love. You look back to the time when you birthed your daughter. When you think about that love, it's an amazing miracle. One saying, I felt so blessed. I felt so proud, another woman is saying. So whatever you did for your daughter, now she's doing for her child. That should make you feel really good and cherish those memories and the children. And that's with God, the same thing with God. He sent Jesus here on earth to pay the penalty for our sins. So really, we need to champ Mary. She really was something else. Not that we worship her, no. But we need to recognize her, honor her, because she was willing to take that, we, that isolation, that criticism, and we need to be willing as well as, cr child, as children of God. My next slide. I want to say Happy Mother's Day to you that are watching online, to you that are here, 
I want to say thank you for every hug, every word of encouragement, and your acts of love that you've given to me. I'm sure we all feel that way. And some of you, maybe your mothers are gone, but they still remember them in our hearts. That's right. We still remember our mothers in our hearts. Yeah, we're not abandoned. They took care of us. And we should feel very grateful for all the love and all the years of love and care. We should bless. I don't have a mom. And even if you're not, if you don't have your net birth, natural birth mom, you still have an adopted mom, and you need to be grateful for them as well. So happy Mother's Day. And I hope, don't forget what Mary did. We need to submit. And yeah, the mothers need, uh, like we had those statistics, they want to be uh, sli able to sleep in and all that kind of stuff. But the thing is, the point is, we show love. You know, the, w the X and the O, those are hugs and kisses. The XOs that we put on our cards. Give your mom a lot of XOs today. So before we start with the questions, uh, there's a part I missed. Uh, this is going back to the men's retreat last weekend. I want uh, to call, I think, two of men that were there, that are here today. We have Telly here and another brother who's going to talk <coughs> about their experience at the men's retreat and what they felt. So do you want to just give a little something about what you learned about behold him what does that mean to you both can you share what you learned at the men's retreat last weekend and who's coming first either of you okay <laughs> so what did you learn last weekend about beholding him about beholding him yeah that was the message what really stuck with you? I don't know. Um, who we're we beholding? We're beholding Jesus. Did you enjoy the fellowship at the retreat there? And just, oh yeah, enjoy that. Did you find and meet new brothers and sis brothers in Christ? Yes, I did. Good, very good. Okay, thank you very much. And now we have Telly come forward. Well, I learned that we look to God for encouragement, and because of that, we can encourage one another. We encourage each uh, another by reading. There was a, a scripture verse that talked about beholding him and that we look to him for y about, about the king. Hold on, you're, hold on, you're getting, yeah, the king. Saying, I, I think I'm saying the king's name right. But he was a, a, a he was a, he approached the king in camp. I think this was Saul. And he sent. So the king sent him away, and I felt like. Oh, this is the donkey. This is the donkey that saw the angel in front of him. And that it was, this is Baal, Baal, Baal. And he was going to give a message that he wasn't supposed to give. And the donkey, there was an angel there trying to get him out of the way. And the donkey actually saw the angel, but the prophet didn't. So, of course, the prophet was really angry with the donkey because he wouldn't move. And so 
he was trying to get the donkey to move and he was really upset. And then the donkey talked about seeing the angel. Why are you beating me? Because I've served you all these years. Why, why, are you, dis- why are you beating me like that? And then all of a sudden, the prophet's eyes were open and he saw the angel there. And of course, that was God protecting him from doing what he was not supposed to do. So that was a in peril. That was a in peril to how God takes care of us and watches over us, even though we can't always see in the spirit world. So that was the message that really hit Telly. That was his takeaway, I should say. And also it was a great time of discussion. There was um, peace that he was talking about. How God provides, God protects. And PP and the third P was presence. His presence is with us. The p- three P's was another takeaway from that message. And that was again the story of Balaam and the donkey and how the king wanted to kill him if he didn't obey him. But the angel of the Lord was there on the road and protected him and provided provided for him the donkey to speak to him, to let him know that he should not go that way. That was how God protected the Jewish people. And that's kind of the way our mothers protect us. God protects us as well. Mothers provide the three Ps as God does. Her presence, the protection, and provides so we learned a lot from last weekend's retreat. It was a good message, a good time of fellowship. And next slide. Okay, now for our trivia questions. Again, we'll probably learn something new today. Is this true or false that the wife of one of the patriarchs of old was buried in Bethlehem? How many say this is true? How many say it's false? No hands. How many don't know? Many hands. Okay, here's the answer. And this is the woman Rachel. It's from Genesis chapter 35, verses 19 to 20. It says, Rachel was buried on the road to Ephrath. Ephrath. That's Bethlehem. And Jacob put a special rock on Rachel's grave. He did that to honor her. That special rock is still there today. Interesting. So yeah, that Ephraim was Bethel and that was to honor her. So here's the next one. Is this true or false? that the wife of the patriarchs of Israel had a nurse. Is this true? No hands, false, no hands, don't know. Many hands. Anyone online got a guess? They don't know either. Okay, here's the answer. And it should say true. <laughs> Sorry. And it's from G- Genesis. Right? I, I, I'm, no, I'm human. I make mistakes anyway. Deborah, Rebecca's nurse, died there. They buried her under the oak tree at Bethel. And they named that place Alan, Alan Bakuth. So the answer really is true, not false here. Whoops. Sorry about that. Sorry, I meant to put true. Okay, now my third question. How many say true? None. How many say false? This is from the epistle in the New Testament. And it addressed women. Is it true or false? That one of the epistles in the New Testament addressed women. How many say true, none, false, uh, how many don't know? Nobody's going. You're still learning stuff. This is good. That's okay. 
The Bible is so much to learn. And we never stop learning. And here's the answer. And the answer is true. And this is in four slides. It's from the epistle, 2 John, verse 1. And it says, Greetings from the elders to the lady chosen by God and to her children. I truly love all of you, and I am not the only one. All those who know the truth love you in the same way. We love you because of the truth, the truth that lives in us. That truth will be with us forever. Grace, mercy, and peace will be with us from God the Father and from his Son, Jesus Christ, as we live in truth and love. I was very happy to learn about some of your children. I'm happy that they are following the way of truth, just as the Father commanded us. And now, dear lady, I tell you, we should all love each other. This is not a new commandment. It's the same commandment that we had from the beginning. And loving means living the way that he commanded us to live. And God's command is this, that you live a life of love. You heard this command from the beginning. Many false teachers are in this world now. They refuse to say that Jesus Christ came to earth and became a man. Anyone who believes, refuses to accept this fact a false teacher and an enemy of Christ. So be careful. Don't lose your reward that we've all worked for. Be careful so that you will receive all of that reward. Everyone must continue to follow only the teaching about Christ. Whoever changes that teaching does not have God. But whoever continues to follow the teaching about Christ has both the Father and his Son. Don't accept those who come to you, but do not bring this teaching. Don't invite them into your house. Don't welcome them in any way. If you do, you're helping them with their evil work. I have much to say to you, but I don't want to use paper and ink. So instead, I hope to come visit you, and then we can be together and talk. That will make us very happy. The children of your sister, who was chosen by God, send you their love. Wow, all of that is very true and very applicable to our lives today. Talks about women, one woman. So this is why I chose this trivia questions about women in the Bible. Applies to our Mother's Day today. And all that we learn today from this trivia question applies to our lives. So we need to follow God and his teachings, just like we learn today. This is why Jesus came to earth to preach, to tell us what God's required of us and to pay the penalty for our sins. Amen? Now, are we ready to smile this morning? I hope you all can. Here's my first picture.
Did you read that? Do you want me to sign it? Okay, I'll, it says, just because she's your mom and she's doing, and she says, I told you so, and she's going to love you forever no matter what. Moms will love you. That's what they say. They love you no matter what. But don't treat her just any old way. And think it doesn't matter. Love her. Don't treat the person who loves you the most the worst. Don't. She's your mom and she loves you, so respect her. She's always calling you her baby, right? So don't take her for granted. Don't. Your mother maybe won't let you see it. But your shortness, your impatience, and your harsh words make her steal away to a quiet place and cry. Her heart hurts, your mother's heart hurts to understand why you seem angry with her. She still loves you. She may not always agree with you, but she will always love you. And it doesn't matter how old you are or how old she is. She's treasured your mom. She's your treasured mom and you'll never have another one. You agree with this? Wow, that really touched me when I read that. Really applies to Mother's Day. In other words, someone saying unconditional love. No matter what we do or say, she loves us. How many here have a mother that's still alive? Okay, several of you. How many's mothers are gone? Many more. Wow. I hope you still remember her and love her. She's still in your heart. Sometimes you have pictures of her and you remember her and those pictures from those pictures. Here's my next one. Do you get this one? How do you feel like that? It says Motherhood Inc. Human Resources and it says she's assigning a contract. It says one vacation a year? That's all I get? And the woman behind the desk says we call it Mother's Day but technically you still have to work. <laughs> kind of a sarcastic cartoon there. You mothers, you agree about that one? Mothers here? And mothers online, do you agree with that? <laughs> okay, here's my last picture. <laughs> the kids are all lined up to give mom her gift. You differ, your moms that know this kind of like one of your children giving you a drawing that they gave and thinking it's a big fancy picture, expensive picture. Then the next one's giving you a little tiny, maybe pancake or something or a little cupcake. But in her mind's eye, it's a fancy, fancy tiered, three tiered cake. The next one is giving some kind of a cereal made or c c 
cookie made or yeah, candy made chain, thinking it's like a pearl necklace. So this is one of the, yeah, this is one of those teething things. And they're thinking it's a fancy pearl necklace. And the last one has got the little bouquet of flowers. Thinking, of course, this is something probably took out of the garden, maybe. <laughs> um, maybe even dandelions, yeah. And then thinking that this is a fancy, beautiful, planted flower. And the last he's saying, we love you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. And they're all giving these little gifts from the, the children are giving all these gifts to the mom for Mother's Day. So again, I want to say Happy Mother's Day to all of you. And we've got Nancy coming forward to do our Lord's Prayer. I feel like I'm on a game show calling them to come up here to do the different parts of the service this morning. <laughs> Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Nancy. And now for the blessing. May God go before you to guide you. May he go behind you to encourage you. May he be with you to be a friend to you, above you to watch over you, and within you to give you his peace. Let's close in prayer. And I hope you have a wonderful Mother's Day and a safe week. Our Heavenly Father, wow, thank you for your message this morning about Mary. The Mary, the mother that carried Jesus, our Savior. With, if she did not submit to your will, we'd all be lost eternally. And we'd be destroyed with no hope. But she was willing to submit and carry your son. And because of that, we've learned about her and what she did, and we can be saved. So we too want to submit in our hearts and our lives to you. You've called us, and we want to be do whatever you called us to do. We learned this lesson from Mary. And it's not going to always be an easy road. But we're here to worship and follow you. We thank you, Lord, for the message. We're hunger, we hunger and thirst for your word. And we love to learn from your word. We ask that you continue to send your angels to protect us, your Holy Spirit to enlighten us. Until we meet again next week. We know that out in the world it could be a dangerous place. So many temptations. But we pray, God, that you would keep us from temptation. Let your Holy Spirit lead and guide us. That's what we thought we learned at our men's retreat, to, re to behold you, to trust in you, to depend on you until you call us home. And we will resurrect just like Jesus did. We thank you for everything, Father. We need to practice and 
do it every day to thank you for who you are. We thank you for our mothers that you allowed us to be born. You created us in our mother's womb. We are created in your image, Father, and we thank you. We are so grateful for our mothers out there, those that are watching online and those that are here at church. We're so grateful. And together we say in Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you all.